Welcome to the video, everyone. Um, warm welcome to all my new subscribers who have joined the channel in the last week. Um, in this video, we're going to keep it short, keep it sweet. I'm um, going to give, be giving you some review uh, strategies and also just giving my opinion on you know the current situation at the moment in the UK with regard to reviews. Um, so let me give you a bit of a background. Uh, Amazon reviews. Uh, fairly basic, right? We've got two forms of reviews. We've got a, a verified review and an unverified review. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, drop me a message if you've got any questions regarding um, FBA. But back to the topic. No tangents today. So let's have a look at these products. So we have two types of reviews very, very quickly. We have verified purchase reviews and we have non-verified purchase reviews. So uh, if we have a look down here, um, we can actually uh, view all the reviews here. Um, and if you have a look here, we can actually uh, filter it to most recent. We can see this little badge here, okay? All that means is that um, the customer uh, has purchased the item through Amazon. So Amazon uh, are willing to stamp it with a verified purchase badge because they can verify that the purchase has gone through their platform. So it's a real purchase of that product. Now, the other form of review is just a basic review. There's no there's no uh, branding on it. It just won't have that tag on. So let's see if we can find uh, an example of that. There might not even be one on this listing at all. Um, here we are. This, for example. So there is no verified purchase badge on that review, meaning that either it was uh, bought on a private website or potentially they bought it on a different account and went to review their purchase on the wrong account, maybe a husband and wife. I see that happen quite a bit on my products, uh, quite often actually, which is a bit of a pain. Now, these two types of reviews um, are weighted differently. So Amazon's algorithm, their internal algorithm, which establishes your um, your average review ranking, uh, you see here the four and a half, four, three, five stars, um, is, is weighted differently. So verified purchase uh, uh, reviews um, are, uh, in Amazon's eyes, worth more than uh, a review such as this, which makes sense because Amazon know it's gone through their platform. So two types of reviews, very simply, right? A bit of a background. Now, in 2016, or, or up until 2016, in August, I believe it was, um, it was actually before I started selling, Amazon uh, allowed third-party uh, sellers to incentivize reviews. So they, they actually facilitated incentivization of reviewing. So what that means is that basically um, they allowed uh, sellers to give away items in exchange for a review. Now, you can imagine the problems that caused. It actually caused Amazon a bit of a, a, bit of a shitstorm um, with the press because, you know, they were getting slated that, um, you know, they are review, um, their review policy and also just their reviews in general were a shambles and they weren't indicative really of how good the product was because a company could essentially give away 200 units in exchange for 200 five star reviews, which obviously it's quite ridiculous. Um, in 2016, incentivized reviews were banned, meaning that um, it's against Amazon's terms of service, which I would suggest reading. But what it actually means is um, that now you have to... Uh, gather reviews in, a tr in traditional ways and ways that are, you know, in align with Amazon's terms of service. Fairly straightforward. Now, a lot of people, you know, they were crying about this, you know, a lot of sellers thinking, oh, no, this is the end. This is terrible. You know, we can't launch a product with 100 reviews, with 200 reviews. But in my opinion, and I'm going to explain why I believe this, I don't think it had uh, much of a negative impact at all, if at all. Uh, I actually look at it as a positive um, impact, especially upon my business and anyone who's looking to start Amazon FBA. Uh, so the reason for that, imagine the scenario, right? We've got huge companies selling on Amazon, right? They're looking to launch a new product, right? They've got bundles of cash and they think, wow, in 2015, they thought, wow, okay, we're going to launch this new iPhone cable, right? This is not this one in particular, this is Amazon basics, but we're going to launch a, a new private label uh, iPhone cable. We'll have a look at one here. Um, and we are going to sync wire, right? And we're going to give away 200 units. So we're going to give away um, about £1,200 worth of units, right? 10, 100 units would be about uh, 6, 000, uh, 600 times that by two for 200, about um, £1,200 worth, maybe more. Now, they could do that in 2015 and launch their product with 200 reviews, meaning they would, you know, they'd spike their, um, they'd, they'd spike their sales as a result, would spike their BSR. You know, they would start organically ranking quite well and, and doing quite well straight away. Now, the reason why Amazon stopped that happening was because obviously it was just against the rules and they wanted a fair playing field for everyone. Now, 
If we look at post-2016, these huge um, companies can now, can now no longer do that. So what it means is for people like you and people like me, normal people, you know, who are uh, selling on Amazon, who haven't got, uh, you know, unlimited, uh, haven't got an unlimited money supply um, and, you know, they... Uh, they don't want to particularly throw away 1,200 or potentially more, you know, up to five grand into giveaways for incentivized reviews. It means that now neither of us can do it. Now, we couldn't do it anyway. I wasn't, you know, willing to give away 200 products for 200 reviews or 500 for 500 reviews. And now no one can do it. So what it means is that we become more competitive to these large companies who now can no longer give away products for reviews. We can not give away product for reviews also, but the majority of, uh, you know, third party sellers who didn't want to throw a load of cash down the drain wouldn't do it anyway. So it's a positive thing, everyone, right? Don't look at it as a negative thing. People put negative spins on private label. I've seen a lot of people slating it at the moment. It, it's just ridiculous. There's, there's you know, the, there's far um, easier ways to get reviews, way, techniques that I use that get me, you know, lots of reviews. I accumulate a large amount of reviews through uh, different pieces of software, um, completely within Am within Amazon's terms of service. Now, uh, for anyone on my course, they know what they are. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of one, one piece of software that I use that's very, very cheap um, and some certain techniques I use with that software to accumulate reviews. Reviews are obviously very important, okay? Um, they, are, as well as price and imagery, they're the three main components that, you know, that, that contribute towards a purchase from a customer. Um, common sense, but also fact. Um, so uh, the review count, all right, being one of those three things is very important. I use a piece of software. There's various um, different uh, pieces of software you can use for this, um, but I found the best uh is something called Feedback Genius, okay? Now, Feedback Genius is a, is a program by Seller Labs, and what it uh, enables you to do is basically automate your email follow-up sequence. Now, you're probably thinking, whoa, you know, what, what on earth are you talking about, Dale? So, um, you know, if you're doing, for example, myself, you know, a 1,000 orders a month, I've not got time to send out a uh, 1,000 emails a month. You know, I'm not going to do that. I am trying to create a passive business model and that would completely defeat the purpose of all of that. You know, I don't want to be sitting on my laptop sending emails all day to, to customers. So we can use automated systems to do that. It's actually uh, the software, you will act, you allow uh, permission for this software to come into your Amazon as a view only um, sort of uh, a view with a view only approach so they can't edit anything they can't actually alter with your your uh, Amazon seller central but they can um, they can view your orders and they can uh, sort of um, they can put their software and they can link it up with your orders so that you start to send out email sequences to all your customers so I send three three emails an order confirmation also a follow-up um, email basically just asking um, the the customer is everything fine with the product everything good anything we can do how do you find it um, blah 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 a lot more that goes into it than that again my template for all my students they've got the template that I use for that the third follow-up uh, email would be the one you know the one that goes in and asks for the review now, this third email, you really need to put some effort into this email. I've got a few templates that I use that I've split tested over the last year um, and found what works best. And you can, if you if you get it right, you can really pick up a huge amount of reviews through using a, a very, very specific um, bespoke email that appeals to the masses um, and, you know, very, very personalized email uh, that, you know, the review is sort of disguised within the email because people can't be bothered to review, you know. I, wow, I've actually bought this. I didn't know that. Pfft, crazy. Um, I don't review. I do now. Now I know as a seller, I realize how important they are. But before I started selling in 20, you know, 16, early 2017, I didn't leave reviews, you know, unless it was bad. So, the you know, the, the results of reviews, unfortunately for us, are skewed. You know, you, you will receive uh, proportionately more uh, bad reviews than good reviews if you look at your total number of orders. So, for example, if you sell uh, a thousand, no, let's look at a hundred as an example. Let's not make it too tricky now. So, if we use a uh, hundred orders, right, out of those hundred orders, I might see 5% uh, of people um, who are happy with their purchase review. Now, I would say out of my 100, 95 people are going to be happy um, with uh, their purchase, right? On five returns, 95% of people are happy. That's pretty good. Now, 
if I look at 5% of 95, we're looking at about four and a half reviews from that, right? So four and a half reviews sounds great, right? At a 5% review rate of 95. Now, what about the other five people who had a bad review? Now, I genuinely believe that, not 100%, but let's say 80% of those five people, from my experience, leave a negative review. So you get four negative reviews for that and four positive reviews, which is a 50, 50, two and a half star listing, when in reality, you know, you're 95 happy customers to five. So I hate reviews. You know, they're not fair on us, on us sellers. And we need to do everything that we can to make sure that we um, increase the volume of our reviews. And again, there are very, very unique ways to do that um, within Amazon's terms of service. Um, one thing I wanted to quickly touch on, which I, I, I uh, brushed over and I think I missed in the previous section, which was uh, when you uh, receive non-verified purchase reviews. Again, I said it's from a separate website, fully compliant with Amazon's terms of service. They allowed five uh, reviews a, a week from a customer that are, haven't even purchased it. So I could go into here now and write a review. I purchased this, but if we look at another product that I haven't purchased, I can still review it five a week. Okay. So again, do with that, you know, what you like, but you can uh, gather non-verified purchase reviews from people who haven't actually purchased the product. Amazon assume that that comes from your website. So Ideally, you want uh, to make sure that that comes from a website or a legitimate source, someone who's bought your product somewhere else, tried it somewhere else, um, and want to leave a review, fully compliant. So my take on reviews, you know, don't worry about them. Everyone seems to make a you know, big fuss about reviews, uh, especially with private label. But in reality, if the systems are in place, you will be able to do it. I've done it. You know, I've managed to keep up four and a half stars, some some products down to four, granted uh, four stars. But I've been selling for 18 months. You know, when I give you that example of the 50-50, two and a half star um, listing, you know, I'm up to four. I average about four and a half stars. And, you know, I've acquired a tremendous amount of verified purchase reviews, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, you know, 600 plus verified purchase reviews through, and verified purchase means people have bought the product through Amazon uh, through these techniques. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, it gives you a bit of an insight into reviews, uh, the different types of reviews, how we can gain reviews and make sure, making sure that we're compliant with Amazon's terms of service, along with a bit of a history of you know the old incentivized review system and how that isn't the end of the world. It's actually a good thing for us private label sellers. So if you're interested in FBA, please do give this channel a like subscribe video like even channel can you like a channel maybe you can i'm pretty new to this so uh give me a, a comment below subscribe drop me an email on info at amazon supremacy dot com uh, if you are interested in getting started and want some help uh, i have a, a very comprehensive um personalized mentorship program and course that i run um and yeah drop me a message about that so i hope you all have a great day uh, and uh, speak to you soon